very good evening to everyone who's watching us live from various parts of the globe. My name is Ruben Lobo and I warmly invite you on behalf of Team Dentist Channel Online to the seventh day of the biggest virtual implantology event of 2020, the world's first virtual implant expo. It's a pleasure and a privilege to have all you lovely people as our dear participants. A big thank you to everyone who's watching us live from various parts of the globe from India, from the Middle East, from Northern, Africa, from Northern Africa, from Europe, and definitely from Germany. Ladies and gentlemen, up next we have a very special speaker, the very talented, the very charming, and the extremely friendly Dr. Amar. A small introduction about our speaker. Dr. Amar studied dentistry at the UOK University in Damascus. He holds a Master of Science in Oral Surgery and Implantology from Danube Private University, Austria. He specializes, he specializes in the areas of complex oral implantology, plastic periodontal surgery, tissue engineering, regeneration and transplantation in oral surgery, aesthetics and endodontics. He's also been through advanced trainings in implantology and complex oral surgeries. He has several publications in various specialist universal magazines. He's currently working with Acura, a group of dental chains in Germany. He's also working in Argen Medical Productions as a medical advisor. He's an international speaker, a keynote speaker, and has been to various countries all, all across the globe presenting lectures on his skills, expertise, and experiences. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting to you, Dr. Amar Light. Thank you very, very much, Roland, for the nice inter introduction and th special thanks for the Dentist Channel Online and for Melvin Medonaka, who actually invited me to do this uh, presentation today. Uh, so uh, today's topic uh, is about the advanced oral surgery, the GBRGT are using allograft materials with Morse taper implant connection. And we have some uh, case presentation from my clinic, uh, which I do every day. Uh, today's lecture is uh, from the city of Traben Trabach, where I do live. It's actually a very special, beautiful city, which I do love very much. And here is also a view of the city at night, how it looks like. Uh, I, our clinic where I do work normally, the Acura Clinic, is in Copelands. And uh, this is our clinic. We have also, uh, as my assistant said, my hobby room, so the surgery room, room where I do perform the surgeries uh, every day. Uh, I'm working also with uh, a very special dentist, very, very good one, uh, Dr. Dan, and here is a beautiful picture for, our, for both of us. And now we are going to go uh, in our topic because of the time. Um, we have here two cases of two implants in aesthetic area, and we can see the both of the implants are actually without problems. They were performed from big surgeons, good surgeons the lower one is me <laughs> the first one is from a college of, of me and you can see that um, actually they they look at the at the uh, radiography perfect we don't have any problem they were performed also with some augmentation both of us the second one i'm going to show you also the case complete later and so uh, in a small picture you can see that everything is fine actually until we can we look at them clinically and we say this situation and the right one is from the right one and the left one is for the left one and you can see that the left one actually have a very bad aesthetic condition which is very very uh, hard to be solved and why we do why we do become actually some some problems like this because we are actually maybe it is about the implant design it is the choose of the implants which we have uh, placed here uh, what you don't know maybe is that actually some implants what 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 you placed are dancing in your patient mouth we are going to talk actually also because here i have also some, another problem with the implants the very implantitis why our some implants are looking so that after two or three years uh, why we have this periimplantitis? The, the main problem of the periimplantitis pro uh, the, for, for, of the periimplantitis and the infection of the implants is, is 
the surface or flat surface connection between the abutment and the implant. I told you that some implants are dancing in the patient mouth. Uh, and here we have a study from the Frankfurt University uh, from Holger Sibrich. He uh, studied the connection between the implants and he showed that we have always, like after the 200, 100 to 200 Newton uh, of force, which is normal in the patient mouth, a movement for the flat to flat surface. And uh, this micro movement will m cause a permanent uh, abrasion of the titanium. And this abrasion will cause a framed um, body effect in, your, in the patient's mouth and it will cause two periimplantitis. It will be a place of bacteria, macro cap and uh, micro uh, pump effect. So it will also collect the saliva inside and what actually we can do against this situation, especially in the front area, because if you are going to have a problem, it will be a really big problem for the patient. So you have to make like a connective tissue management. You have to place connective tissue transplantation to this area to lose this problem uh, is to use the Morse con connection implants. And here is a small video and here you can see the uh, difference between uh, an implant at the left side which have a flat to flat surface and you can see the micro gap uh, under the movement of 200 newton centimeter at the right side uh, is also another system which is which has a conus connection a good conus connection and you will see that the there is no micro movement in this case and I do use in my practice the argon implants because they do have the best connection between the abutment and the implant. And if you place the, abut the abutment inside the implant and screw it through the flexibility of the titanium, the abutment will place force against the titanium and the titanium will try to, against, to apply an against force and it will be like uh, like a one unit. So this implant is actually as one unit. And in this way, you are able to insert it freely, uh, subcrystally, one, two to three millimeters, sometimes more. Because if you have, if you don't have enough um, gingiva and enough soft tissue above the implant, you'll have also an issue sometimes for bone resorption or that you would able to see the titanium uh, color uh, in the aesthetic area and if you are going to place the implant deep subcrystally you won't have to have this problem you can see at the left side uh, the surface to surface connection uh, you, you will have resorption if you are going to place the implant uh, subcrystally because uh, the most of implants as i told you has this micro movement and they have also a tile which is machined, which is pull, uh, which is uh, soft, which is not rough, which is not uh, treated, and in this way there will be no osseointegration integration in this area, and there will be only the soft tissue problem. And sometimes you are going to to develop the patient is going to develop here some uh, uh, peri implant peri problems like uh, deep uh, uh, socket. And uh, I would like to talk about the bone graft materials which I use. I prefer uh, the allograft materials which the argon sells because um, the treatment of these materials, um, actually if you buy a foreign materials like allograft or xenograft, they have to be sterilized or they have, their, they have not to have bacteria and the, the, bacteria, the viruses, they have to be deactivated. And this material comes originally from the German Institute for Cells and Tissue Replacement in Berlin. And it's a bone bank, tissue bank, which they have a patent uh, in the developing of the material. So they are pressed in high pressure of periacic acid. This way, the, um, this way, the materials are going to uh, to be uh, to be bacteria fry and the viruses are going to be deactivated but the 
bone are going to keep uh, its osteointactivity. And this way you can make vertical and horizontal um, uh, guided tissue regeneration with this bone materials, which is actually also uh, very good uh, to compare with the autograft, which which was uh, till the last past years the golden standard, the best materials which you are going to to use. Uh, at my last lecture with the dental channels, we have talked about the bone graft materials, about the allograft as a golden standard, as the new golden standard that it will replace the autograft materials because with the autograft you are going to perform two operations for, for the patient. And uh, if the lack of, of uh, adequate of, uh, of, uh, of the bone, so intraorally you are going to take uh, in one place like one cubic centimeter or not more, but extraorally it will be also a more, um, a more painful operation and sometimes with more complications. The bone materials which are sold in Germany, we have allograft uh, two companies which sell, sells allograft. Xenograft are 18 companies. Fitogain, which is um, uh, actually uh, planet uh, bone graft materials. We have uh, three companies and the alloplastic, which is a bone-like materials. We have 42 companies and the argon is going to sell um, the allograft materials worldwide and now they are selling it in germany and uh, to next they are going to sell the materials worldwide uh, the allograft bone materials you can buy it as a powder as a rough powder or fine powder you can buy it as a block corticospongosa blocks or uh, sponsor blocks or you can buy it as a dbm demineralized uh, bone matrix uh, which is uh, also a very very good materials because it's very soft we can perform very good uh, seamless lift with them you, you, they are uh, in injections like this one on the right and they are very uh, very easy to use uh, the argon sells also the uh, soft tissue uh, graft the soft tissue graft the ones which i prefer for the guided bone and tissue regenerations are two they are the fascia lata and the epiflex the epiflex is a cellular subdermal matrix it is a human skin but it is the subdermal it is not the uh, upper layer it is the the second layer inside and it is a cellular so it doesn't have any cells you can buy them also in uh, more more than thickness so you have um, different thickness the fascia lata is a human fascia it is the layer which cover the muscles and both of them are very stable they are they, you can do very good you can perform very good uh, bone grafting with membrane technique or you can cover your your um, augmentation with them very good because they are really tough and uh, you can make also a decision uh, closing with them you can do also if you want to uh, thicken your uh, the connective tissue of the gingiva of the patient you can use also the very the epiflex very good because it will it might replace the connective tissue transplantation in this case and this is the epiflex uh, you can perform also every kind of augmentation with this materials so you can make a hori technique uh, container technique and the ring technique after Professor Giesenhagen, you can cut your own blocks. Uh, I do it actually, or you can uh, let uh, other companies to make for you like a um, 3D uh, bone block, um, uh, milled, 3D milled bone block. So it, you, can, you, are, you are able also to plan it digitally. You can also mill it one to one and place it directly in the patient mouth which will um, close the defect directly and very very easily and uh, as i've told you about the demineralized bone matrix uh, and about the osteoinductivity uh, here we have a study on frogs and uh, they have inserted the bone materials underneath the skin of the frogs and after six months they saw that it was starting to, to mineralize and the patient developed bone underneath the the skin where actually no 
osteoclast, osteoblast, or osteocytes inside, and this is the the proof of the osteo uh, in in um, the osteo induction of these materials. Um, if you want to understand what is osteo inductive, osteo osteo inductive, and osteo induction and the osteogenic, um, osteo inductive is if you are uh, osteoconductive is if if you are forcing the bone materials to grow on a surface which is not biological surface like the surface of the implant it, this is osteoinductivity the osteointegration osteoinductive if the bone graft materials is giving a sign to the body to build itself toward this materials and i have to mention that the bone graft materials are going to resolve completely and it will be placed uh, with the patient uh, bone. Uh, here we have also uh, a slide uh, where the which membranes are actually be sold in in Germany and which um, uh, features of every membrane. And here you can see the argon at the third one, and you can see that the features of the membrane what that you can make a GBR GTR. Uh, with these materials, uh, if, if you are going to compare with the other membranes, they uh, they have also very limit uh, of use. And uh, now we are going to go to the cases. The first one, uh, we have a patient, 60 years old. He came to the clinic with this situation. It is also a front a front tooth uh, defect. Here you can see also not very good oral hygiene. Uh, the lower teeth are looking so, and here we have the bite of the patient. After I opened, I have seen the defect of the patient. So it is like a 3D defect. There is a lake of the buccal and palatinal lamella. And here you cannot place uh, actually any implant. I mean, you are going to use the conventional flat to flat surface implant. It will be loose maybe in two weeks if you have. Uh, luck and you have an oster integration, uh, you will have a really big problem with aesthetic and uh, with very implant uh, implantitis and uh, uh, you are not going to able to make um, like a, a direct augmentation with implantation. So I have decided to do something with, which is the umbrella technique. So I have choose some screws, osteosynthesis screws from argon and placed them uh, half inside the bone and half outside to make a barrier against the soft tissue. And then I placed a fascia lata. This is the fascia lata membrane, which I've told you. <clears throat> and I'm using some pins to close it. Uh, inside, from one side, you pin it. So you fill with uh, cortical granulates. They are also human materials, as I told you, as granulates. And then close the membrane from the other side suturing and after five months you can see that we have the height of the bone which we we want and also the horizontal um, bone which actually okay for placing an implant now but if you are going to place here an implant which has like um, surface to surface connection you will have also problems so it is better to insert your implant here deep uh, like two to three millimeters underneath uh, the uh, subcrystally, and in this case, uh, I have chosen uh, an argon implant to place, and I'm going to show you the result. Uh, you have sh for sure to close a your wound like uh, um, tension free, and I try always not to make a vertical uh, scission. So I'm I'm. I'm actually making my flap design only vertically. So I'm trying to avoid um, uh, vertical inc incisions always in my augmentations. And here you can see at the left side is the situation. At the right side is after five months, after we have made the, the, the umbrella technique. And now the drill of, for, for, for placing the implant, as I told you, you have to place it subcrystally inserting the implant. I'm always using uh, like uh, a normal saline for 
for the surface of the implant. And here you can see before and after. After placing the implant, it's also two to three uh, millimeters subcrystally with a little bit augmentation inside. And after five months, you can see the situation after the incision. You can see that the implant is actually covered with a new regenerated bone. You have here the thickness of the bone, you have the height of the bone, you have no problem with the aesthetic with the aesthetic area. And I have had to drill to discover the implant to remove the covering screw of the implant. You can see uh, the fourth picture from above. Uh, so this is the situation before and at the right side it is the result. Here you can see we have the height also, it's a perfect height, it's a perfect bone, and we have an implant also integrated inside without any problem. It's very easy to set it. So we have changed a hard situation to easy situation. As I told you, I had to drill to uh, cover the covering screw of the implant, to uncover the covering screw, and then insert the gingiva former. The situation is looking like this. You have to keep your implant from inside clean. And then we have the prothetic here, the crown. I like also to use the zircon abutments. They are very friendly to the gingiva. And this is a key to, um, uh, to insert the abutment in the correct position of, of the, uh, um, for the six count inside, to, to insert the, the abutment in the correct position in the implant, inside the implant. And here is the abutment inside. I have made also because of the uh, lack of the connective tissue, a free connective tissue transplantation to the patient. Uh, it is a little piece, piece which you take from the gum of the patient. It will heal in two weeks, uh, this area. After two weeks, you are not going to uh, distinguish any scar or any problem and uh, transplanting the connective tissue uh, at the aesthetic area to get um, keratinized connective tissue. And after this is the Ausgang situation and uh, underneath is the result after, after the connective tissue transplantation. And here we have uh, x-rays uh, from, from the start until the prosthodontic placement, the crown. And here is the aesthetic result after doing also some composite filling. And you can see we have a very good acceptable result after that. We don't have any problem with the soft tissue or with the hard tissue or with, with the other implant. It is very, it's a very good aesthetic result, which we have done. And with other implant systems, actually, it will be very, very hard to get such a result. Now we move to the second case. I have a patient, and this is an old op uh, orthopanogram of the patient. And uh, you can see the, the fourth quadrant, the patient, the fourth quarter of the patient has uh, treated teeth, which are with um, symptoms, with pain. Uh, and this is, this is the clinical um, diagn diagnostic of the patient. And this is the periodontal screening index of the patient. And after we have, made an x-ray for the patient of the symptoms. We have seen that we have a fractured tooth. We have decided then to remove both of implants and perform with the cortical granulates, actually only filling the, the, the defects, the uh, extractions alveol with um, cortical uh, granulates and performing an x-ray after that. So the x-ray is looking like this. We have also a histology that the patient has only a uh, radicular cyst. So it is only radicular cyst. And here we have our plane, our uh, planning for that uh, we have a combeam CT. So this is uh, the posterior implant and this is the anterior one. And we have started the operation. So this is the case um, before performing the operation. The patient has also some attrition. 
here's both sides also upper jaw with attrition and those are the, the our implants they are four millimeter in diameter and 11 millimeter, uh, uh, 11 millimeter in length starting our incision so as i told you we have only filled uh, the uh, extraction socket with uh, cortical granulates and we have this very good result we are going to take about the second preservation also in our second uh, in our next case and uh, this is the argon tray it's actually very very simple tray you can use it with every case of implant you don't have a problem the starter burr is very good burr to play to position to place the position the first the initial position of your implant implant here we have placed both of them and this is the pilot trail the pilot trail will determine the length of your the, the length of your implant and this is the final drill uh, very beautiful very clean implant to, to insert and here inserting the implant 0 0.5 to 1 millimeter subcrystally the second one and for with a very good uh, primary stability over 40 newton centimeter which is actually for a lot of cases important and here you have the cortical granulates which i buy also for from argon this is like five cubic inserting the granulates also uh, covering the implants with cortical granulates and placing the sutures here is an orthopanogram after inserting both of implants and uh, this is the situation after four months which we have uncovered the implants and here i've because of the lake of uh, the connect the curtainized can give the attached can give i have choose to make uh, a vestibulum plastic and uh, th in this way i'm going to split the the gingiva the uh, two two layers one layer will go down i'm going to suture it down and i'm going to leave also a little ridge and then exposing both of implants in this way i'm going to gain more keratinized gingiva and this is the gingiva former placing the gingiva former also removing covers covering screw and placing gingiva former and then we are going to have this uh, view after two to three weeks it will look like this and then it go, it's going to develop uh, connective tissue and here you can see we have over five millimeter of connective tissue uh, when performing the impressions the impressions of the implant it's very very easy to make a closed or open um, uh, impression with argon system here are the um, the covering caps for the closed system and here are the implants and here we have made like um, uh, nam uh, uh, abutments they are then uh, uh, individual milled abutments and here is the the uh, try-in the metal try-in and you can see that everything fit perfectly also an x-ray for the try-in and this is the final work the process the prosthetic work and here you can see that it fits also perfectly a little try-in everything is perfect the problem is solved now okay now we move to the other case to the third case our third case is about the container technique after professor hui in uh, this case i have got a patient with this situation and uh, i should actually place two implants in this area uh, it was uh, uh, the patient was uh, referred from a college from me and after i opened i have seen the situation so you can see that the um, buccal lamella is completely not there and it's not you are you are not going to be able to gain an aesthetic result if you are placing an implant and with the augmentation it will be very hard because of the blood supply because you need a blood supply for this uh, and here you can see 
the situation with this small video. It is a very big defect because the completely of the complete of the buckle lamella is not there. And then I have tried, I have used and um, uh, I have made my my covering uh, uh, shell. So the shell technique after Professor Khoury, as I told you, this is a few few more span. So this is the bone of the bind of the leg. And I have cut it uh, that it uh, uh, go uh, in the area and cover the, the defect and placing uh, two osseosynthesis screws and then fill the gaps with uh, inside with uh, cortical granulates. Here, as I told you, fill it with cortical granulates. And as I told you, I'm trying not to make any vertical in inches, uh, incisions, only horizontal ones. And this is the result. This is how I uh, put the uh, cortical granulates and I have used an epiflex. This is the subdermal acellular uh, membrane to cover the augmented, augmented area and then close it uh, with uh, uh, tension-free sutures. And this is the result after, after, after that, after two weeks. And after six months, we have uncovered our augmented area. And you can see that we have very, very beautiful uh, newly regenerated bone you can place very good aesthetically to implants inside. Then removing the osteosynthesis screws. And placing to, as I told you, Morse, uh, Morse conus connection implants because they are actually the best to uh, to place in this in such defects and such such augmentations. And as I told you, the argon protocol is very good. If you see here, I'm moving actually my drill uh, contraclockwise, so so to the to, to the opposite side, trying to make more uh, bone condensing in this area. So I don't have to buy uh, very expensive uh, drills, which, which are for uh, osteo condensing. I, I'm using the normal argon drills to use it. Uh, and here you can see the final result. And then lacing the two implants inside. And here's the result. And then it's preferred to the prosthodontic to, to, make, to, to make the final result. I have also some picture for, for the final result I'm going to show you in the next webinar. And uh, the fourth case now, we are moving to the fourth case. Uh, here is a case which I use the digital guided surgery with bone augmentation with direct implantation. So it is a 65 years old patient and she has diabetes mellitus and uh, the normal health is actually okay. This is the mouse sit situation. She has only the both incisors in front and uh, posterior she has one molar. Uh, I have made a comb beam CT and impressions models combined them in co-diagnostics and made a 3D planning. And here we can see at the tooth one three, uh, palatinally we have also a defect. We, there is a risk that the bone in this area is going to resolve. That's why I have made some augmentation here and some sinus lift, intern sinus lift here in this area. And this is the model. If you are going to make a 3D planning, you are going to get your implants exactly where you want, where you would like to have. With Argon, it's also very easy. You can make your plan. You can get somebody to make you your, pl your, your planning and they'll get you your drill guide uh, ready to your operation. You can place your implant very easy. 
and how it, the guide is, looks like. And this is the guided tray. Uh, you have for every implant a drilling protocol. If you follow the drill protocol, you'll have your implant exactly as, where you want. As I told you, we have made like intern sinus lift to, for the patient, inserting the implants through the guide. And this is a cortiflex. Cortiflex is a demineralized cortical plate. You can also pin it, you can suture it, you can put it everywhere you want. It is very easy to cover and you are going to gain a bone in this area. First of all, if you're going to look at in the x-ray, it will be radiolucent, uh, but with time it will mineralize and be, uh, and be as the patient or the patient uh, his same bone. This is after suturing, after inserting the implants. And after five months, we have performed the uh, uncovering of our implants. In this, this case, we have used the same drill guide template, so you don't have to make a new incision. You can punch the Gingiva, and it will look like this way, and it will heal very quick. You can make all, you can perform also directly your impression. I have preferred to make the impression after that, placing the Gingiva formal. After one week, you can make the impression. And here's the impression. Implants with Gingiva form on both sides. Inserting subcrystally, you will have no problems. Model. And those are the crowns. Bite. This is situation in mouth. We try to keep everything clean inside. Hybrid abutments. The Argon company is delivering a very big range of uh, uh, supra constructive. Um, Super constructions of the implant, so you can choose every everything you want. They are individually milled in this case, so it is the uh, the hybrid abutments which I choose in this case because they are actually very good for for the gingiva. And then placing the crowns, we have also a very good result in this. In this case, I have also a follow-up after two years picture. Here's follow-up after two years. Both sides, this is after one year. So you can see that the, so you can see that the, uh, the interdental uh, area is, is filled with, with the very beautiful, um, Gingiva in this area. And after three years, result after three years. Now we are going to move to case five. This is a socket preservation. Uh, the patient came in this situation to us, but with an accident. He was cutting the, um, the grass and uh, the instrument or the machine hit his tooth and he had a broken root inside. So the plan, the planning was to extract the tooth and to place an implant. And I do like to perform a socket preservation uh, in front uh, case because I, I would like to show you also the, the aesthetic result which you can gain if you make a, uh, if you perform a socket preservation. So after extracting the root, you can see that we have a very thin layer of bone lamella, and if you leave it this way, it will be resolved in two weeks. So to, if you are going to try to, to get a really aesthetic result, uh, I'm making also, uh, always from a free um, connective tissue, a free uh, tissue transplantation from the gown. Uh, I'm going to show you also how I'm going to do it, and inserted in the butterfly technique. Uh, for about this area, you have not to worry if you are going to make like a uh, healing plate, it will be like this. 
uh, and you can place it at the gum of the patient. And uh, this is the, sorry, and uh, this is the free, I'm sorry, I have, okay. Uh, this is the free uh, gingiva, which I took from, from the gum, and I'm going to clean it first of all from uh, fatty tissue. And after cleaning it, I'm going to de-epitilize de it from both sides to look like a butterfly to remove the epithelial layer above them. And I'm going to let the epithelial layer inside and this will be a cover for my augmentation for the socket ridge preservation. As you see with my scalpel, removing very carefully from both sides and letting the epithelial tissue inside to make a cover. It will look this way. And then I'm going to suture it from one side, fill the gap with bone and suture it from the other side. And after four months, you are going to get this result. You have connective tissue, you have keratinized tissue, you have bone. If you open, you will see this result. Very beautiful result. And then you can insert your implant subcrystally, close it. This operation took like maybe 15 minutes for inserting one implant because we have everything we need. And after inserting the implant, after exposing the implant abutment, and this is the provisional restoration for the patient. You see we have keratinized tissue, we have bone, the aesthetic result, very beautiful. And this is the temporary restoration for the patient. This is the implant with the Gingiva forma and with the final result. Uh, I don't have pictures for the final result, but I'm going to post them maybe with the next webinar you are going to see it. Now we are going to move to the second, to the sixth case. It is also a socket preservation, but in this, this time with direct implantation. This patient has also a, a cracked tooth, a, a problem with his tooth, which was broken. Also the crown was broken and here they tried to make like a endodontic treatment and post end core and a crown, which actually was broken again. We have also a fractured tooth again. And there was because of uh, and the patient had pain and we had to extract the tooth and make also a socket preservation in this case. And this is what I told you, the healing um, plate. You can also connect a provisional restoration with the healing Five plate. Five minutes more to wind up your presentation, Dr. Ramar. Thank you. I'm sorry? Five minutes more to wind up your presentation. Okay, yes. I, uh, I'm, I'm okay with time. Perfect. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much. Okay, and now you can see how to prepare for the butterfly, as I told you. So you, you need also to, to only to split the gingiva and this is our harvest area. This is the harvest, the harvested uh, free tissue and here the butterfly preparation, preparing for the implant, suturing from one side, implant is inside, covering with, with bone materials and this is our result after that. OPG after inserting the implant and result after four months. You can see that we have lake of connective tissue in this area, keratinized tissue there. So that's why I have tried to perform a vestibulum plastic, cut the tissue, move it downward and then suture it and remove every tissue which is movable and then uncovering the implant inserting the gingiva forma and 
returning the, the provisional restoration, it will, you will have no problem because your implant is deep inside the bone. And here's the result performing the impression. And this is after two weeks of impression. And this is the key try-in hybrid abutment. And this is our final restoration inserting. If you insert it first, you can you may you may notice that the tissue is a little bit white because of lack of blood supply. But after two minutes, it will be uh, with new blood supply, so the blood supply will come. And here is the final result. We have actually a very good aesthetic result, which, where you don't have any uh, aesthetic problems or resorption, or it's it's very beautiful aesthetic case. And now we move to our case number seven. As I told you, for the socket preservation, the idea is to maintain the very thin buccal lamella, which normally is resolved after, extract, after extraction of the tooth. So it is a patient, she, here's a patient, 40 years old female, which has become a lot of uh, endodontic treatment screws, and uh, she developed always cysts. She has also um, uh, um, apicectomies, more apicectomies, and this is the case. This is the result in mouth. Uh, it's not aesthetic. Uh, she has also recurrent cysts, and that's why we decided to remove the front four teeth. After the, removing the teeth, we have noticed the that the buccal lamella is actually completely not there. So I have filled with allogen, allogenic uh, uh, cortical granulates and tried to cover it and tried to cover it with uh, tension-free uh, uh, coverage. This is an OPG after, after the first operation, after five months, after uh, covering, after uncovering the bone augmentation, we have seen that we have real, really very thick, beautiful, newly regenerated bone. And I have performed also a, a bone spreading, bone splitting. I use my bone splitting set. To insert the implants. In the posterior area, we have performed uh, intern sinus lift also, lacing the implants, also subcrystally, covering screws, second augmentation with fascia lata. This is the human fascia, as I told you. Pin the membrane, fill it with one with the uh, augmentation materials, and then close it, suture it. Posterior area, also augmentation. And this is the provisional restoration. This is the result after inserting the implant after two weeks, after two weeks front area. And also lake of connective tissue. And that's why I performed the presidium plastic and the free nictomy. This is a free nictomy. After that, exposing the implants and I'm going to move this is a combium CT and here you can see the newly regenerated bone in front of the implant vestibular is everything is new regenerated you can see also a sagittal plane here front also the, you can distinguish the new bone from the old ones Here's the posterior implants with a sinus lift. You can see that we have a very clean sinus. And this is the prosthetic result. And I have one picture after placing the crowns in the patient mouth. And this is the patient. 
Okay, I think because of our time, I have only one case. Uh, we are going to stop here and we are going to take your, your questions if it is okay with you, Robin. Yes, sir, please go ahead. You can finish with your case. Okay. Uh, I'm going to move to this case. This is a very complicated case. The patient is actually was been by more than a dentist, more than surgeons. And this is the situation as she came to me. Uh, she has, she was in this situation, the upper jaw, and she wanted to have fixed teeth, beautiful teeth. And she has actually this uh, big um, uh, removable partial, removable denture, full denture, and she didn't want it. The lower jaw, it was looked like this. Uh, first of all, if you are going to make an augmentation, you have to make an augmentation for every uh, red or white, uh, the, the red, uh, acryl which you, which you see here on the removal on the removable denture so everything must, should be uh, rebuilt should be regenerated to get to get an uh, aesthetic uh, fixed result in the patient mouth and here the lower area exactly the same so first of all i have cut the composite and i have made like a vacuum um, plate for the patient for covering for aesthetic result and for covering our augmentation First of all, the patient was more, 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 more times she has implants and they were with peri implantitis. She has also pain because of the MF house, because of the connection between the mouth and the antrum. She has got explantation, re implantation, then re implantation, then re explantation. And this is the lower area, also explantation. And she came to me in this result. And if you look, if you look at the patient situation at, under the x-ray, you see that she, she doesn't have any bone. And here you have to perform, you have to place everything from the beginning. You can see here, if you look at the upper jaw, there's sometimes no bone, there is some uh, uh, mouth antrum connections, lack of bone and this is a stroman implant with very implantitis also. Front area, there is no chance to place any implant. The second quarter now is the same. Sinus, which is actually also full with, with connective tissue. And at the lower jaw, we have placed three implants, bone level from Strauman. And this is the upper area. So we don't have like two to three millimeters, which is not enough for placing anything. And what I have done, this is, this is a 3D printed um, model from the combium CT of the patient. So this is how the patient's bone looks like. And this is the uh, mund atrum verbindung. This is the connection between the mouth and the uh, and the sinus of the patient, front area. And this is where we, where we perform our surgery. We have made then a PRGF from the comp PTE company. Uh, and we are performing sometimes so uh, uh, operations under general anesthesia. And this one, this one was also under general anesthesia. And this is the PRGF. And this is the, this is an uh, OS ileum. This is a tricortical ileum crest. And it is like 60 by 20. I bought it also from Argon. And I have had like 15 cubic cortical granulates to, uh, to uh, regenerate the, the low spawn. Uh, first of all, I have 
cut at the ileum. So you can see it is a very big uh, bone, which you can cannot take actually from the patient extra orally, also from the ileum crest. It is, this is a very big block. You are not able to take it from the patient. You can buy it as, a, as an allograft and you, we, can, we will see if it is work exactly the same or not. And here is the situation. So as I told you, tension-free close-up of your uh, augmentation is actually the most important thing. And this is the situation. You can see that she has like a blade thin bone up and in some places there is no bone. The sinus is open from both sides. This is the other side. At the other, at one side, uh, we had the uh, Schneider membrane at the other side, not. And I have placed PRGF inside the, the sinus and then performed sinus lift. This is the block. I have cut the block to past at the defects and, the and fix it with osteosynthesis screws. Front, the other side, the RGF membrane, and then suture it. This is after placing the implant, and this is after six months. I'm going to show you now after six months how it looks like. I'm going to skip those steps because we don't have a lot of time. This is the provisional restoration, which I told you it's only a vacuum uh, plate with the teeth from the from the uh, patient um, removable partial removable denture. And here you can see the result after six months. And now after exposing, uh, we have also restored the lower teeth. I'm going to skip also the restoration of the lower teeth and show you the result of the bone after six months. I think we have 10 slides to go. And now exposing the bone. As I told you under general anesthesia, incision. And this is the result. So you have perfect bone overall for placing new implant before and after, also before and after, very beautiful result. Removing the screws. Actually, it's I told you it's a general analysis, but it's a seduction. So it is uh, like diazepam uh, intravenous, which I do alone, so I don't need an anesthetist. I have placed the implants, and this is the result after two weeks. But the other operations, we are going to discuss them in other in the next webinar. So for today, we are finished. Thank you very much for listening. Can we replace membrane with PRF graft? No, because everyone has uh, its uh, actually its uh, specific specifications. Because a PRGF membrane, you cannot fix it. You can't fix bone augmentation with a PRGF membrane. It's not uh, uh, hard enough to do it. It's not tough enough. You uh, about and PRGF will uh, improve your uh, can, your uh, soft tissue healing. Uh, you can both you can use both of them, but you cannot replace 
a normal membrane with the PR gear because every everyone is actually completely different. I'm using the membranes because they are tough, so I can close my uh, my augmentation very good, and I can uh, it is very tough, so I can fix my augmentation with it against the soft tissue. And Thank the you, movement. sir. Last question: You scrapped the gingiva graft. What is the reason? I'm sorry. You scrapped, you removed the part which had a gingiva graft. What was the reason? This is in one of your cases that you showed. Yes, because because I like to, uh, because I wanted to make a cover for my augmentation. If I'm going to place an only, um, only granulates and let it open, uh, it will be get infected and it will be resolved and uh, I'm not going to get any result with this. Uh, placing, um, the free graft and covering the tissue will, will enclose the area and the regeneration will be performed. Uh, the, best, uh, close, the best closure is actually the patient is the gum, the free, the, the free uh, gingiva transplantation, because you get also at the same time the keratinized gingiva with the normal membrane or with the normal, uh, with the connective, with free connective tissue, you are not going to get any uh, keratinized issue and this will improve your aesthetic views of them again. Mm -hmm.